I'm not sure I'm emotionally ready for this, but I don't think I ever will be, so might as well start now, right? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Thank you all so much for joining me today, in which will be probably a very, very long video. I probably will split this reading experience into multiple videos, maybe two or three. I'm still not sure. All I know is that we are about to go on a very epic journey, I hope, because as you can probably tell already, I am going to finally read Les Mis by Victor Hugo. This has been on my reading plans ever since I first saw and absolutely adored with my whole heart the musical, of course. I've seen the movie, I've seen the musical, and I was even fortunate enough to see it live on Broadway, which is an experience I will never forget. This is one of my favorite stories, even though I know it's a bit weird to say that, right? Because I haven't read the original story, um, which is what I'm about to do. I do want to change that. I want to fall in love with these characters, with this book, and I really hope I do, because I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited, I'm also a little scared because I know this book will destroy me and just to give you a brief context I actually did start reading this book, I would say, a couple of months ago, perhaps, because I decided to create a little community on Discord, which includes both channels that are exclusive for my Patreon, but also some other sections which everyone is very welcome to join. And I had this idea because I love buddy reading books with everyone, I think it's so much fun and it really brings so many amazing discussions to the table. I love always to hear your thoughts on books, so I thought it would be cute to create this little community and the link is in the description of all of my videos if you'd like to join us there. We have some bookish chats, we have some exclusive live shows and that all started because I asked you if you would like to maybe buddy read this book with me. It would be and it will be a very low-key thing. I'm not planning to do a live show on it or anything but I just thought you know what, I'm gonna start this book. Maybe some people would like to start it as well and finally tackle this book since it is very intimidating and I know how scary it can be to read such long books. I think this will be probably the longest book I've ever read, but I'm not too sure. It is definitely one of the biggest ones. Um, so yes, I asked if you'd like to better read it eventually. We don't have a schedule or anything. It's very low-key, like I said, with no schedule, no live shows, no rush, no pressure at all. It is just there for you to join if you'd like to. I created little sections for each part of the book so you can discuss it without getting spoiled. And now I'm finally <laughs> truly starting it because like I said, I did start this book some months ago, I would say, and I started crying immediately <laughs> because I'm ridiculous. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm still not ready to dive into this book and actually film a vlog about it because that's what I want to do. I want to film my entire experience reading it, um, but I wasn't, <laughs> I was not ready. As soon as I read the first chapter, I was like, this is not the right time to be reading this book. So I had to wait a little longer and now here we are um so of course this vlog or vlogs will be completely spoilery so just be aware of that if you haven't read this book yet and don't want to be spoiled then please do not watch this video because i will want to discuss a lot of things if you've been on my channel for a while then you probably know that my reviews are usually very rambly i talk a lot more about the emotions that a book brings me rather than its themes or plots or writing style and everything which i do like to talk about about those things, don't get me wrong, I love that, but I'm much more of a emotional reader than a logical one, I would say, I'm not sure if that's even a thing, but this is all to say that usually I ramble about things non-stop, especially if I have very deep thoughts about it, if I love it or if I don't like it at all, that's usually where I cannot stop talking. But you probably know that already if you've been watching my videos, so if you are looking for a very in-depth analysis of this book, that's probably not what you're gonna get from these vlogs, I'm not sure. What you are gonna get is all of my reactions to reading this story, which I'm gonna say right here, right now, I'm probably going to cry a lot. This story affects me deeply. I think it has so much going for it um, and it is so relevant to this day. It's amazing how stories that were written ages ago still have so much meaning during our time and it's a little scary to think about but also fascinating so I'm hoping to talk about that as well. But with all that said, 
this will probably be a very messy reading vlog slash reading vlogs because th that's how I function as a human being. If I fall in love with something, I can never shut up about it, ever. If you watch any of my videos, any of the reading sprints that I host or co-host with other friends, it's always the same thing. I get too passionate about things. So if that's not your jam, that's completely okay. I'm just letting you know that that's who I am um, and that's what you can expect from these videos, I think. So. With all that said, I'm really hoping to love this book. This is definitely a five-star prediction for me, um, which I'm not sure it will happen, but I really hope so. I know a few people whose favorite book of all time is this one. I also heard a few people complaining about the pacing, which I'm sure I can complain about it as well, since it is a very long book and usually I do agree that they could use some editing, perhaps. But other than that, I'm just hoping to absolutely fall in love with it. And because I I know some of you might ask me this is a beautiful dust jacket created by this beautiful company i often talk about them they're called bookishly and they create bookish boxes they have a lot of different themes but usually they have one each month or every two months dedicated to a specific classic novel and when i heard they were doing one dedicated to les mis i thought it was the perfect opportunity because this is absolutely beautiful I love it so much. Also, this is only volume one, as you can see here. I do own volume two as well, and we'll be reading the entire thing. Uh, but underneath the dust jacket, all you can see is the usual Wordsworth black classics, um, which is cute and all, but this cover makes it all worth it. <laughs> I really love their company. I will, of course, leave their website linked below in case you're curious as well. They have a lot of beautiful things inspired by literature and it's amazing. I highly recommend. But yes, I think it's safe to say we are kind of ready <laughs> to read this book. Um, I'm very scared. <laughs> This will break my heart. Um, this edition also has an introduction, which I will not read yet. I do want to read it after I finish the book. And um, oh, it also has a note on the musical version. Oh my gosh. Okay, I will need to read everything. Maybe this is some sort of a comparison between the book and the musical. That would be absolutely fascinating. Um, but with that said, I think it's time for us to start reading it. And of course, as always, please let me know your thoughts if you decide to read it as well. I'm very excited and oh my gosh, I can't believe it's finally time to try and finish this book. <laughs> also, I decided to use this very cute bookmark that says it's a good day to have a good day. This is done by the wonderful Brit from Basically Brit and I will of course link her website in the description as well. I feel like I needed an optimistic bookmark <laughs> to use for this book because it's a very heartbreaking story, a lot of things happen and I need some sunshine in my bookmark to read this, otherwise it will be very complicated. <laughs> Hi everyone, just a quick note before the video starts. I do mention the musical quite a lot and spoil a few scenes towards the end of the story. So if you've never watched Les Mis, if you've never read the book, maybe skip this video to avoid spoilers. <laughs> With that said, of course, I hope you enjoy it and thank you so much for being here. Can I just say, I have a pretty good feeling about this book. <laughs> and I only finished book one of part one. This will be so confusing. <laughs> um, but yes, it's book one of part one. So I just finished um, the part that says an upright man. It is an entire chapter about the bishop. Oh my gosh, there's a dove outside my window. That scared me, but she's so beautiful. What the hell? Okay, hello. Okay, she's gone. Oh my gosh. That scared me because I wasn't expecting it, but she was so beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> this was an entire chapter about a bishop. He is the first character that we meet. And I am already fascinated by the way Victor Hugo presents his characters. He starts the chapter with two things. First of all, he says that everything we are about to read about him might not be that relevant. It's up to us to take our own conclusions and see if it is or not, and make our own judgment about this person through the facts that are presented to us. But he also starts his presentation by saying that everything people usually know about him is from gossip. So there's a big contrast right from the start, but I like how he doesn't say any information about how this man is either a saint or just plain evil. Because there's no such thing, and I feel like this is going to be a big theme in the entire novel. The fact that he's a bishop as well, and that he is the first character we meet, 
is very telling of the entire story because it starts with a man that didn't exactly live a good life from what we can tell and suddenly he turned to God, he found his faith and found a way to almost redeem himself in helping others. And we have that big transition in his life that then is also questioned because up to a certain point he always believed in the good of people, he always trusted that the human soul is good in nature and we should all make an effort to help the poor or those in need, those who are sick and that's what he basically dedicates his entire life doing now. He even trades his house for a hospital, he turns this huge space and he never closes any of his doors, they're always welcoming to people who might need them, he transforms this place into a huge kind of hospital or a home for those who need one and that's a very beautiful thing it's very moving to read about that as well because then everything kind of crumbles a little bit when he's faced with the reality that maybe that's really not everything that humanity needs maybe we also have some necessary evils he has a very interesting dialogue about the importance of the revolution of the french revolution to be more specific if it was necessary if it had to happen if there wasn't another way for people to get their freedom and their equality back or rather, not back exactly, because they never had one, they were fighting to get one and he was questioning if this was the only way. And it was very interesting to suddenly see that inner struggle that he was feeling, because while he does still believe in God, while he does still have his faith, and while he does still believe that helping others is the reason and that ideally there shouldn't be any violence, there shouldn't be any crime, there shouldn't be any evil done to people. Obviously that's ideal, but that's not reality and I feel like so far he has kind of been living in this almost utopic society inside of his little house where everyone was being taken care of and he was kind of forced to move out of that reality and face some very other important questions. Also when he witnesses the death of a man who was charged with the crime and was sentenced to death, he's also faced with that, faced with that gruesome reality and I don't think we never realize if the man was guilty or not but even if he was did he really deserve that that ending just because he stole something or committed some other minor crime um, or even if it was a bigger crime did he deserve that and these are all very hard questions to first of all put in the book but most of all of course get an answer for them um, and it's very fascinating to see that through the perspective of someone whose life was completely changed and now he's entirely dedicated to doing the best he can to help people but then at the same time having to confront this reality that maybe his faith and God and kindness is not the answer to everything but I really love reading about his character I like how sarcastic he can be sometimes he has a very fun dynamic with his sister and I don't know this this book already feels very human I'm trying not to say too much right now because I know I will have so many things to say but this was just my first introduction to Victor Hugo's writing style and you can already see how much he gets about human nature, I guess. Um, I like how he keeps asking us questions, he never rushes into any conclusion, he lets the reader take their own conclusions based on what we read, despite it being a little ambiguous sometimes, but I also think that's on purpose, of course, there's still a lot more to read. Um, but it was such a strong introduction to this story, because it made me immediately care for this character, I immediately want to know what will happen next, why did we start here, how will that link to other characters, how will all of these themes of freedom, faith, poverty, kindness, revolution, justice, how will all of those play together, how will each character represent them, maybe? Um, it's just so interesting, I, I really love that the book started like this, because it's a very humble way, weirdly enough, to start a story. I think nothing much happened, we are just learning about this man's routine and it already feels so natural and so real and oh my gosh, I just cannot wait to continue reading this. I am really loving it so far and it feels a little ridiculous because it's only 41 pages in, in this massive book, but I'm getting a really good feeling and I'm very excited to keep reading. <laughs>
I just reached page 100 and I am feeling all sorts of things right now. We just met Fantine a few pages ago and I love the fact that we are getting more of her backstory. In the song, when she sings about her past, you never know exactly what went on with her. You get a few hints here and there, but you're never exactly sure about what happened. And I love that in the book we get to see that, even though it is, of course, absolutely heartbreaking and I'm just at the part where these boys sent a letter to the girls saying that they were abandoning them because it doesn't look good for them to hang around with such lower class people. It's not exactly what they said but it is very much implied and all the girls started laughing when they read the letter as if it was nothing special, nothing that they should care about. And then the way Fantine pretends to feel the same. It says, Fantine left like the rest. An hour afterwards, when she had re-entered her chamber, she wept. It was her first love. As we have said, she had given herself to this boy as to a husband, and the poor girl had a child. This is the first time we hear about Fantine's pregnancy, and I... I cannot... <laughs> I'm already feeling way too emotional over this because Fantine is definitely one of my favorite characters. Her story is so tragic and I feel so bad for her. I'm sure that here we'll probably get to know a lot more about her life before we even meet Cosette, probably. Um, find out how she survived during all this time, how she eventually found a job and then how things went from there, which is absolutely... It's so sad and I, I I need to prepare myself in order to read the next chapters. I'm not sure we will jump right into that, but I guess we will because book four, the first chapter says, one mother meets another. So I don't know what that will be, um, but I'm, I'm so nervous to read about this because it's already evoking so many emotions. We also met, of course, Jean Valjean. We heard about what he did. And of course, we have a lot of good commentaries about justice and how people should pay for their sins, how that should work. Basically, he stole a loaf of bread for his family. They were starving, they didn't have anything. What he did was clearly an act of despair. And whenever he tried to fight that or stand up for his beliefs, he just got added some more years to his prison. And he ended up being there for 19 years. 19 years. And now he's just trying to go back to his life, which was only possible due to the bishop's kindness, of course. And it was such a beautiful scene. I love it so much. And even in the musical as well, it's such a short period of time during the musical, but it's very impactful because he was not expecting a person with supposedly such power above everything to give him a comforting place, give him a home, give him this love and kindness and open arms that he hasn't had in a very long time because of course everyone refuses to give him a job or let him stay and sleep anywhere really because he has this yellow card saying he was in jail and that's enough for people to look down at him, of course. And now he's just trying to change that. He's trying to do something good for his life. But he must have a bit of a cynical attitude towards humanity. And I wouldn't blame him, of course, um, due to the way he was treated by everyone. Um, so that's where we're at in the book. <laughs> and my heart is bursting with all the emotions. There are some beautiful quotes as well. I am trying to write them down and then at the end maybe write down on a little notebook what my favorite quotes were. I particularly love how it describes each character because it has so much life. You can exactly see what they look like and what their passions or struggles are. It feels so human. With Fantine, for instance, it says, as to Fantine, she was joy itself. Her splendid teeth had evidently been endowed by God with one function, that of laughing. And this is such... <laughs> it's a beautiful description, but it's also incredibly tragic, especially when you know what's coming. She will not be laughing a lot in her life. And how... how awful is that? But yes, when the bishop decides to help Jean Valjean, when the police goes there and they tell him that a few of his silver was stolen and the bishop is just like, oh, there you are. I am so glad to see you, but I gave you the candlesticks too. And Jean Valjean, it says, he opened his eyes and looked at the bishop with an expression which no human tongue could describe. 
He must have been so shocked and surprised and most of all grateful, but he cannot even express that thankfulness because it's something that he probably never experienced in his entire life. And now we are going to witness this incredible character development and I'm so so excited, oh my gosh. What an amazing book, what an amazing book. And yes, it's only the first 100 pages, but I just... I love it so much. <laughs> Are we about to find out how Fantine met the Thenardiers? Thenard, well, Thenardiers. <laughs> I'm awful, but are are we, are we about to do that? Because it says her name. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. <laughs> wondering when we would meet Javert and now here he is oh my gosh the first mention of his name and we do also get some of his background which is fascinating to me because it's very easy to compare it I think with Jean Valjean as well I think they have kind of a similar path in life they wanted to change because of how society treated them even if their backgrounds are very different of course and they may be had different intentions on what to do once they changed their lives, but the motivation is very similar. Society treated them poorly because of very unfair reasons. Jean Valjean, of course, for the crime he committed and people wouldn't let that go. And now Javert, we are finding out that is because of his origins, his family. He was very poorly treated and I'm very glad we get to see some of his backstory as well. I feel like in the movie we do get some glimpses of it, but not a lot. So I'm very interested in reading more about him, actually. I think he's one of the most complicated characters, probably. I think he's, he's one of the most intriguing as well, because he's not a bad person per se, he's just doing his job and sometimes you could feel his inner struggles when making certain decisions and questioning himself on whether or not what he was doing was really fair or if he was doing that because that's what he was made to believe. Um, I'm not sure if that will be the same in the book of course but in the musical I've always found it very intriguing to realize that his character is just a human being making mistakes. Maybe he was at the wrong places during the wrong times knows um but i also wanted to mention the thernardiers thernardiers oh my gosh i cannot pronounce this name um i wanted to mention them because at first it seemed like i i was confused because i was like wait is it really her or is it maybe her mother because she seemed way too kind <laughs> i really liked how victor hugo kind of tricks the reader i would say because she seemed such a nice person at first when she was talking to fantine she sounded very sweet, very nice, and then suddenly, of course, you find out that they're actually a very dishonest couple and are only interested in the advantages, more precisely the financial advantages that Fantine can provide them if they were to guard Cosette, which is what they do, of course, but I think it's, it's funny the way 
Victor Hugo introduced them because they seemed like completely different people. I was a little confused at first because I was like, oh, maybe it's not them. Maybe it's their parents or something. I don't know. <laughs> but no, it's them. And they are very strange people. <laughs> they are funny to follow, I would say. Um, but yes, I just wanted to point that out. <sighs> Okay, I just I just finished the book dedicated to Fantine's story. It ends with then she fainted. So I'm not sure if he, she's dead yet or we need to assume that she's dead, but I don't think so. I think we'll get the end of the story on the next book, which is dedicated to Javert. It is book six. I feel I <laughs> I feel dizzy reading this chapter because it is incredibly painful and sad and raw. There was a quote here that Victor Hugo wrote that sums up this entire chapter so perfectly, I think, and encapsulates the awful circumstances in which these people were living, especially the poor people, of course, and after everything Fantine went through, after everything she had to do in order to save her kid who didn't even need that because she was told that Cosette was sick and they were asking her for more money, money she didn't have and therefore she had to make a lot of sacrifices um, so she was desperate to save her kid who didn't even need that and it, it's just... after all of that um, the scene with her teeth and everything I, I, I was feeling very uncomfortable reading that because it's one of my trigger warnings so be aware of that there are a lot of scenes with physical violence here and i i couldn't really handle it um but anyway after all of that victor hugo says what is this history of fantine it is society buying a slave from whom from misery from hunger from cold from loneliness from abandonment from privation a soul for a bit of bread misery makes the offer society accepts I feel like that could sum up this entire part of the book perfectly and I'm sure many more to come but it's it's terrifying to be confronted with this reality because it was a reality for so many people and it still is. Not only does it make me feel completely disgusted that this still happens to so many people, we don't even imagine the circumstances that some people live in but it also makes me feel extremely grateful for all the privileges that I have and sometimes don't even notice. This poor woman, she was happy, she was naive, she was in love. She had someone who she thought loved her or at least cared for her in a way. She had a beautiful kid and suddenly all of that went to waste. This happy, cheerful, hopeful soul now has lost everything she had, including her job, due to some miscommunication that was weird as well. But I feel like... I just feel terrible for her. She's always been one of my favorite characters and we lose her so quickly in the story. But she has so much meaning because she also symbolizes this setup for the entire story and this is what moves the plot as well because without her we wouldn't have Cosette and Jean Valjean wouldn't want to save her and there wouldn't be a history for us to read. So she just moves the story through her suffering and misery and hopelessness and I hate that that happens to her, I hate that that happens to anyone really, but this is just so tragic, I cannot put into words and the fact that she did all of this out of despair for her kid when she didn't even need to do that. It's infuriating to read about it and I was feeling dizzy, I was feeling sick reading this book because it's too much sometimes, but I'm glad we got a portrait of what it meant to live for these people. Like, it, it, it's insane. I cannot even picture what it must have felt like. Um, and it, I don't know. I'm just feeling so many different things right now, but mainly sadness and disgust for these people who trick others for money. And yes, I know they're desperate as well, but that doesn't make it right. Um, so far, what can I say? I think the musical is an excellent adaptation so far. I know I keep comparing it to the musical, but I like doing it because it's one of my favorite things and I like to see how they they could adapt such a long book, how could they do that? But so far I think they did an incredible job because they hit 
the main points of the story and they showed us how intense these characters are while conveying the message of the story perfectly so I really like how they adapted the book so far and now I'm not sure if we'll get more information about Javert as well um, who again I do still think he's one of the most interesting characters as well because he, again he's just doing his job even now when arresting Fantine he said it's my job to do so I obey to the law I cannot allow any of this to happen and he also developed some prejudice against poor people which can be a whole other subject and I think that will come up again but in reality I think he's a victim of their circumstances which is very tragic in itself as well so I, I, I guess this book is just making me feel all the things and it's very hard to put them together for an update um, I just this will be a very rambly vlog I can tell you I don't know I'm just rambling because I'm loving it I think it's such an incredible piece of literature but it hurts. <laughs> it's hurtful. Hi. <laughs> I am now just starting book 8 called Counterstruck. We just had the big revelation that the mayor was, of course, Jean Valjean all this time. Um, it's very interesting the way Victor Hugo presents his characters. And if you're not familiar with the musical, if you're not familiar with the movie before going into the book, I can see how surprising this would be. They always seem to be either new characters or a different type of person. In this case, they introduce this mayor as Mayor Madeleine. Yes, obviously if you didn't know the story, you would think that this was a new character that we haven't met yet. But I, of course, knew what was coming and still I was surprised because it wasn't that obvious from the beginning. We don't know much about this person. We know that he has a good job, he has a good place in the community, everyone respects him, he is known for being very kind, but that's not enough for you to assume that he's Jean Valjean, right? It's not enough. So I can see this being a major twist for people who are not familiar with the story. I just want to say that that didn't take away my enjoyment at all because all the scenes that we had after that were absolutely amazing. The confrontation between him and Javert <laughs> It was so good because he almost manipulated him. He manipulated Javert into thinking that he was wrong because Javert, of course, recognized him um, because of his strength. He helped this man who was stuck behind something. I can't remember now. That scene is also in the movie, which is great. Again, this is such a great adaptation. Um, the, the musical, I mean. But anyway, he was saving this man and Javert looked at him and said, I've only ever known one man in my entire life who would be able to do that. Can you guess who it was? <laughs> we found out, of course, that they had met each other a long time ago and now here they are again, face to face. And Jean Valjean is trying to get Cosette back. Fantine is about to <laughs> leave us, I guess. Um, oh my gosh, the scenes with her are just heartbreaking. Um, there's a character here that's not in the musical, I don't think, called Sister... Oh, I can't remember her name now. Something, I cannot find it now. It will come back to me, I'm sure. Um, but she's the one who's usually with Fantine, seeing how she's feeling. I think she will start having some hallucinations about her daughter pretty soon. It's devastating, isn't it? But I'm loving it so much. It is filled of humanity, this book. It, it's so good, it's so diverse in a way. And I was a little hesitant going into it, despite the fact that I, I guessed I would probably love it, but I was hesitant because I thought this is such a massive book I really do not want to start it and feel like it is too long because that would you know put me off a little bit of reading it but that's not the experience I'm having at all this 192 pages are filled of history so far there's so much happening there's so many questions being raised about everything in this reality really and it's fascinating all the things, all the ideas that you can take in each one of these pages. To see where we started the story with the bishop, it seemed like a very irrelevant character. But just like Fantine, he's one of the main reasons why this story even exists. And that's such a beautiful detail. To think that it all started with someone who we didn't know was going to be relevant or not, because Victor Hugo himself tells us that there are a lot of unnecessary details maybe in this story, 
and that's not usually the case everything has a purpose everything has a place in this book and it all makes so much sense i'm loving it so much and yes i know people usually talk about some chapters about sewers <laughs> about the city of paris and how that's probably not very interesting to read i i can believe that <laughs> but so far i'm so fascinated by the way that he is bringing us this story and how all of these characters entwine in a way or another um, of course i'm looking forward to meeting the other characters we still haven't met one of my favorites and also one of my least favorites <laughs> you'll get to hear all about that when we get there of course but for now all i can tell you is that i'm loving it and i am so glad i am <laughs> everyone we have now reached part two cosette um remember when i said that i did have some least favorite characters Cosette and Marius are two of my least favorites, at least in the musical, just because I don't think they play such a compelling part in the story as mostly everyone else. Um, but that might change with the book, let's see. However, I just wanted to quickly mention Fantine's death scene. It was obviously very sad and there's an interesting change in the musical where Fantine and Javert never see each other again before she dies and here they do. Which I needed to gather my thoughts about that because I wasn't sure how I felt about it. Her death here is much more sudden. I feel like they kind of romanticized it a little bit for the musical and here it's very sudden. It's very... You know, I feel like it's much more realistic, which I do appreciate, of course, but I, I didn't know that she and Javert were gonna meet again. And it's almost right after that that she has her final breath and suddenly she's gone. Um, which I think could be an interesting starting point for Javert's character as well, because he wasn't directly responsible for her death, but he certainly contributed, so maybe that will also change his perspective a little bit on justice, what's fair, what's right, and eventually will lead to his downfall as well. So I kind of like that. I think it can be a clue for his eventual development, but of course it was so sad. Um, I can't believe I reached volume 2 though. I have been reading a lot this weekend. I think I've read more pages this weekend than any other week from this book, which is amazing and I'm really looking forward to keep going. Anyway, I just everything that led up to Fantine's death. She was so hopeful that she was gonna see her child at least one last time and she sounded so happy about it. Then the doctor even said that her kid was there. She just couldn't see her because she was sick so maybe she would make her kid sick and that was awful and so manipulative. Like why would you say that? It's terrifying. And then in contrast to that, I, I still, I, I really want to talk about this as well, the characterization that Victor Hugo does of Javert, I think so far, is my favorite because he seems like such a stiff and tough person. There are amazing quotes here about his character, such as, without clearly defining his own feelings, yet notwithstanding with a confused intuition of his necessity and his success, he, Javert, personified justice, light and truth in their celestial function as destroyers of evil. There's such a big contrast in this character. Then he also says he has this fear-inspiring happiness, which revealed what we may call all the evil of good. <laughs> Victor Hugo is an amazing writer, isn't he? He makes me fear for this character, not only because of this persona that he has, that he's frightening for the other characters, but I actually fear for him. I think it is easy to think that eventually he might go against himself due to all of these characteristics. He might eventually cause his own downfall due to everything he's done. And for some reason, I find that so compelling. I don't know. I think it's one of my favorite parts of the book so far. I'm loving it so much. I already have so many tabs. Can you see that? <laughs> It's amazing. It's been such a fun experience annotating everything and I just cannot write to write down all of my thoughts once this is over, but fortunately we still have a long way to go.
what? Is he about to meet Cassette for the first time? Oh, I think so. Jean Valjean has now officially taken Cosette. The poor girl doesn't know who he is yet, <laughs> but she does feel safer already and that's such a beautiful thing to read about. It's very obvious that she was very poorly treated so far. She doesn't even know exactly what it feels like to be loved and taken care of, but she will know, she will be fine. <laughs> These last few chapters that I've read were a bit repetitive because they are all about historical context mainly, and then also how Cosette was treated by the Thénardiers, which to me was, you know, more enjoyable to read in a way, or rather, not really enjoyable because it's awful, but it does give you a notion of who these people are, what their intentions are, and also what life for Cosette has been looking like so far. She has been pretty much tortured by these people. And I love how Victor Hugo keeps describing these characters in a very discreet manner sometimes. He doesn't have to say a lot for you to realize how terrible these people were to this child, which obviously was easy to figure out based on how they treated Fantine as well but descriptions about how they got paid from the mother and work from the child which is disgusting and then some situations where Cosette was looking at the other girls playing with the dolls or overall just having fun sentences like Cosette was measuring with the sad and simple sagacity of childhood the abyss which separated her from that doll how sad is that? She must feel so confused and wondering why is she so different? Why is she so terribly treated compared to these girls? Something else that I underlined was she was beaten unmercifully. That came from the woman. She went barefoot in winter. That came from the man. So each one of them acted in their own interest, of course, and a lot of these chapters are about that, is to give you an idea of what this child has been going through since forever, basically, and what was going on in the streets of Paris as well, how people are so afraid of authority because they basically have nothing, while also have this willing to fight for a possible future hope, for a better future. Um, but I also do love the reflections that Victor Hugo inserts in the middle of the book in which he questions the purpose of war. Is it really necessary? Do we really need to reach that point in life? Do we really need to go to this extreme to fight for justice and to fight for what's good? It should come naturally to people, but unfortunately greed and self-interest and so many other things always come first and it creates much more damage than good, of course. Everything starts to feel pointless because in order for you to fight for what you believe in, fight for a better future for you and your family, you're basically destroying your entire life. You're making this huge sacrifice. The paragraph that really stood out to me was this. If there's a reality which surpasses dreams, it is this. To live, to see the sun, to be in full possession of manly vigor, to have health and joy, to laugh sturdily, to rush towards a glory which dazzlingly invites you on, to feel a very pleasure in respiration, to feel your heartbeat, to feel yourself a reasoning being, to speak, to think, to hope, to love to have mother, to have wife, to have children, to have sunlight, and suddenly, in a moment, in less than a minute, to feel yourself buried in an abyss, to fall, to roll, to crush, to be crushed, to see the grain, the flowers, the leaves, the branches, to be able to seize upon nothing, to feel your sword useless, men under you, horses over you, to strike about you in vain, your bones broken by some kick in the darkness, to feel a heel which makes your eyes leap from their sockets, to grind the horseshoes with rage in your teeth, to stifle, to howl, to twist, to be under all this and to say, just now I was a living man. There, where this terrible death rattle had been, all was now 
silent. You really start questioning, what is this all for, don't you? Anyway, that's part of this reality and unfortunately of so many people's realities and it's, it's not exactly <laughs> pleasant to read about this. Um, but it is good for us to reflect about this. Um, everything seems so pointless, you know, all of this. Um, why can't people just be kind and look after each other and live at peace? Anyway, questions, questions. Um, I think I'm gonna stop the vlog here because it feels like a very nice moment <laughs> to end this experience at because now we finally have Cosette and Jean Valjean together. The story is about to get a bit more hopeful. <laughs> at least she's safe for now, of course, and I'm looking forward to keep reading it. I'm loving it so much. It has so much personality, so much life and death in it, I guess, but always with such a deep analysis of all of this human condition that people live in and how they deal with it, their inner struggles and debates and just... Oh, it's so it's such a powerful book. I'm loving it so much and I'm almost done with this first book, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if the other one will keep going on the page where this one left off or if it will start on page one again. I'm not sure, but anyway, I'm excited. This is going so well, slowly but surely, and I'm loving it so much. So I'm gonna stop this vlog right here. Of course, we will have some other parts to this experience, but let me know what you think so far. Let me know if you've read the book as well. I would love to hear your thoughts, but for now, I'm gonna go. And as always, I'm sending you all the love all the hugs and I'll see you again very soon on my next video. Bye!